Welcome back to the Roundtable. I'm your host, Audric Vox, and I cannot contain my excitement. This is literally my fourth time trying to record this, but every single time, I just feel like I can't do a breakdown of this trailer justice. So, I'm going to try to keep my fanboying at a minimum and go through this new trailer for Star vs. Force of Evil, the Battle for Muni TV movie event. This television movie, of course, is the first four episodes of Season 3. Book Be Gone, Marco and the King, Poe Defender, King Ludo, Return to Muni, Moon the Undaunted, and the half-hour episode Toffee. Although, if I had to guess, these titles may not be in order, and Return to Muni may actually be the very first episode of the movie that just makes more sense to me considering how Star Crush ended. However, Book Be Gone sounds like it's dealing with Ludo and the Lost Book, since as we know in Star Crushed, the Magical High Commission was searching for Glossaric. Therefore, the book, but they were unsuccessful, and found a blank book instead. Was it a decoy? Was it the real book of spells? I can't wait to find out the answer. Regardless, just looking at this promo alone, this movie is going to blow us all away. I am not ready. So let's run through this one minute version of the trailer. Originally a 30 second version came out. That was the one I was going to break down. Then I had a conference call with Frederator, then the one minute version came out. However, since we already have the Rick and Morty video on tap, which you guys should check out if you have not seen it already, I decided to do this one today. So apologies for the delay. You guys ready? Let's do it. The promo opens up with Once Upon a Time by the Disney XD narrator, which is kind of corny, but hey, I kind of dig it. There's a voice over a moon. The queens of Muni have been coming here for generations. And as she's saying that, her and Star, who are both bow damaged, and Star has one of Marco's hoodies wrapped around her, kind of like a scarf. So I wonder, if we actually look at Star's closet, is one of Marco's spare hoodies actually in there? Because this clearly has to be some kind of spare, unless her and Marco reunite already. But considering he's not with them, I doubt that's the case. And she's also holding the corpses or lifeless bodies, soulless bodies of Rombolus, Hecapu, and the skull or face of Omnitrax's Prime has balloons. And I believe Moon has actually brought her to this Glossaric Temple, which I'm just going to call it that until we get an actual proper name for it and more information on it. Because if you look at the next shot, you see many depictions of Glossaric. You see this spiral staircase leading to some kind of object, and it looks like it's being locked away. And at the top is a pink gemstone similar to the one in Glossaric's head. And as you see, there's a door shaped just like Glossaric, again with a pink gemstone. And over to the left, again another Glossaric depiction. And this looks very aged by time. There's moss, there's a bunch of plants. So who knows how long this place has been inactive. But if I had to make a guess, as we know from the book Star Merkel's Guide to Mastering Every Dimension, Glossaric created the Magical High Commission. So perhaps this temple is a place to revive them since Lechmit's gone, and I notice his horn is invisible with the rest of Magical High Commission, so maybe he's gone for good, which would break my heart, but at least we have a show where death has actual consequence to it. The cheesy Disney XD narrator continues, There's a long line of queens who lived by their own rules, and we have recycled shots of Moon and Eclipse's tapestry from the episode Into the Wand. We then have a shot of Star falling into swamp water, and I'm assuming Buffrog's house. She's just, she's just going face first in there. She's having a good time. And again, there's some scratches on her. Her outfit's a little bit torn up, so her and Moon have already engaged in some combat beforehand. It then fades into black with a frog going ribbit, and Star imitates it going ribbit. And again, she has some scratches on her. Something happens with her and Moon. And while all this is happening, there's a voiceover of Buffrog going, Your daughter is! And then it cuts to Buffrog and Moon. Again, swamp water everywhere in his house. And he continues, Very strange. And, you know, he's in a night robe. This man was chilling when Star and Moon came into his house. And I like the painting on his door. I'm assuming his children did that. And you'll see a little toy next to the door. Oh, they're expressing themselves. And Moon, also covered in swamp water or mud, whatever it is, goes, thank you. Also, I want to point this out. There are two uploads of the trailer, and Moon's thank you is different in both. In the original upload, she's like, thank you, like, yeah, I know. Here, she's kind of like, thank you. Like, she, there's a hint of optimism to it. Like, yeah, my family's nuts, but I love them. As opposed to just, yeah, my family's nuts. It's, it's genetic. The cheesy narrator goes, this summer. And we see Star, she's in the all-seeing eye to spy on Marco, and this is how we know that Marco is still on Earth, he hasn't come to Muni yet, because Star is wearing one of his hoodies. However, his hoodie's also present in this shot. And this appears to be the same scene that was in the other promos with Marco Diaz, we're being sat now. He's face first in, is it oatmeal? Some kind of dough? I'm not really sure. And Star is very down about the whole situation. She confessed her feelings to Marco and then she had to leave, assumably forever. And we see that she's in some kind of chariot and there's weaponry everywhere. There's a battle axe, there's a mace. I think I see some arrows. 
but she isn't bow damaged yet. So whatever happens to her that causes some of her clothing to be tattered and scratches on her face did not occur at this point. And also at this point, she isn't wearing Marco's hoodie as a scarf, but rather as a hood, just like an Into the Wand, Little Red Riding Hood style. And there's also a voice of her star going, I didn't blow up my whole life just so you can give up. Assumably talking to Moon about Toffee and running away. This appears to be in the Glass Rick Temple still, but however, in this shot, Marco's hoodie isn't a scarf, but a headband. What happens? And you can tell this to the Glassrick Temple because there's a depiction of him right behind Star with those big ass buck teeth. Moon responds to Star with, it's too dangerous. And why is there a vending machine in here? This is how you know this place belongs to Glossrick or has something to do with Glossrick because there's a vending machine. There's food involved. Classic Glossrick. But yeah, Moon's saying it's too dangerous to do anything but stay. And this shot cuts to Star, assumably outside the chariot, which appears to be a reanimated skeleton, similar to the chariots and carriages we've seen with Tom. And Star has the same hat on she put on in the previous promo, saying it's just a little danger. And again, she's not bow damaged yet. She has no scratches on her. However, there's a shot of her yanking Moon out of some vines. I'm assuming this may be the Forest of Death we learned about before. We actually saw that in Face the Music. Or it's an entirely new part of Muni. And in this shot, she has some bow damage. So something happens in the sequence where Star sees Moon in danger. And they encounter something that causes them to get a bit roughed up. We then cut to a flashback of Mina back when she was sane and she looks a bit younger, exclaiming, we need to go to war! And it cuts to a present day clip of River bursting open the gates of Muni, and we see some villagers in the back, and we see Marco, and both River and Marco are wearing loincloths, so that line in the last promo where River's like, fetch us our loincloths wasn't just a joke, nah, this man was serious, he's ready to go to war, and it looks like there's mud on his arms? Some battle markings, possibly. But notice how, while River's charging in the battle, and all the Mumins are like, hell yeah, Marco looks kind of worried. And notice how River still has his crown. This is very important. And then it cuts to a different shot. It, it's edited to look like it's spliced together, like this is the same scene. But it's actually a different scene. You can tell by the how many castles in the back. This one is of Ludo waving, like, hey guys, he's on top of Spider, Bird's in the back. So, sometime in between Star Crushed and here, Ludo, or Toffee controlling Ludo, went back to Earth to go get his gals. And Ludo raises his other hand, and looks like he has a better grip on his magic because he commands the rats to charge into Muni. He's pillaging the village. And notice that when he commands his rats, Toffee's arm on him starts glowing. The crystal starts glowing. And as this is going, it cuts to Hekabu saying, we need to sign a peace treaty. Again, I believe this is a flashback. Once more, if you read Star Marco's Guide to Mastering Every Dimension, you know that there was a Muman monster accord that was signed at some point that Toffee's violating now, that Ludo's violating now. I believe this is the signing of that, so this is probably during the half hour episode, Toffee. And we have Romulus just being Romulus going, Yelling feels really good right now! The classic Romulus, I love him. And then comes to Black, and we have a voiceover of Ludo. There's an echo effect on it, which I believe something the editor did, I don't think that's an actual episode, and he goes, hip hip! It cuts to him, hooray! And he has River's crown on. And look at the flag in the background, it's the same half crystal, that is missing from Star's wand, that's in Toffee's hand right now, that was formerly Ludo's wand. So this is assumably after Ludo takes over Muni. He has a flag, he has the crown, he still has a chip bag that has a shirt, that's kind of depressing, and this is likely from the episode properly titled King Ludo. Cheesy narrator continues, the must-see movie event. Ludo again, with River's crown on, I'm assuming this is a key to the cuffs that are keeping River chained right now. Ludo goes, say goodbye to your freedom, and if I have to make a guess, Toffee's the one possessing Ludo and doing the actual work. And when Ludo regains consciousness, he's like, oh man, I'm doing a pretty good job. Unless he catches on that Toffee's actually doing this. Because in the last promo, Ludo realized, oh, this is Toffee's hand. I don't like this. And this is before he becomes king, assumably. And River being a badass for the first time in a while. Like, 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 like playing it seriously. Because usually when River has his badass moments, it's comic relief. Here, he's, he's being dead serious. He says, you will never be king. So even if Ludo has the crown, he'll never be fit to be king. He'll never be mentally ready to be king. Let's go. I, I love this dialogue exchange already. Cheesy narrator elaborates, the battle for Muni. And later on he goes, it's a family affair, because I'm just going to skip that part. So the rest of this breakdown can flow better. Moon saying, stop, he'll find us. And again, they're in the Glassrick Temple. And as she's saying he'll find us, it cuts to Ludo opening his eyes, our Toffee opening Ludo's eyes. It looks like he's possessed by Toffee. One eye, you see Star, the other eye, you see Moon. And notice the contrast in their expressions. Star looks angry, she's determined to finish all of this, while Moon, she looks concerned and scared. And we kind of find out the reason why in a few moments. Why she's so intimidated by Toffee. 
But at the same time, it looks like she's the one holding Lulo, so she's coming face to face with Toffee after all this time. She's not being scared anymore. Because if it's like a star crush, she was a bit shook. She did her best to fight Toffee off, and she was unsuccessful. The entire Magical High Commission got bodied. And Star goes, I defeat him once, and I can do it again. And her wand is glowing green, but this looks stronger than ever. And this is why I think Moon is saying stop, he'll find us, and why Star is using a stick in combat in earlier promos and in this promo because Coffee and Ludo have grown so strong that if Star uses her wand and her dark magic, especially when it's glowing like that, Toffee can track them down and find them. And here's a huge revelation. Like, I, I was shook when I heard this. My mouth literally dropped. Moon is crying. I think this is the same scene where Moon's saying, stop, like, he'll find us. She confesses to Star that Toffee killed her mother, the former Queen of Muni. This is why when we saw the grandma room, we never actually saw Star's grandma because she's no longer of this world. Her life was taken by Toffee. Now, I actually believe this reaction of Star, and when the wand stops glowing, I don't believe this is because Moon said he killed my mother. I believe this is Moon saying, stop, he'll find us. And that's when Star's like, what do you mean he'll find us? And Moon will explain, the more you use that wand, while Toffee's linked to it, the more you expose our location. And if they're on the run from Toffee, it's definitely not a good idea to use the wand. And this is continuing the theme that was said in Season 2 of Star not relying on her wand as much, or not relying as magic as much, but her own abilities, her own capabilities, that she doesn't need the wand. I really dig that. I like that they're continuing that aspect of her character arc. And Marco on Muni is putting in the work. We see Rubariat, his outfit's a bit tattered, like his chest is exposed. Marco goes, now? And we see, like, a court gesture next to him, and, uh, a mime? And Marco just goes, we fight. And again, we cut to Star fighting off rats with a stick. I'm assuming because she's not trying to use her wand or else Toffee will find them. But this is before she's super bow damaged. So maybe not. My theory is that either someone took the wand or Moon has the wand so she can defend herself. And Star's like, you know, I can, I can handle this. I, I, can, I can take these fools out with a stick. You use the wand. And I would love to see current Moon in action with her wand. Oh my god. And the rats look shook. They're like, oh, oh fuck. We then cut to Ludo, he's a bit battle damaged. I'm assuming he's doing this himself, he keeps hurting himself because he goes, Levitato! He aims it at the book, I'm assuming this is the actual book of spells, whether if it's blank or not, if the other one was actual decoy. And it shows that the book is immune to magic because it bounces right off of Ludo, it just blasts him right in the face. I'm assuming he goes flying, and I'm assuming this is a comedic relief moment, but also is used to illustrate, like, yeah, destroying the book is not an easy feat. Not that Ludo's trying to destroy it, I think he's just trying to open it. And I also believe this is him trying to have complete control over Toffee's arm. But yeah, that blast bounces right off the book, it, and since it's a Lavitato, I don't believe it's gonna hurt Ludo too much. I believe all the scratches he has is from flying into walls because of the Lavitato spell. Like, it's levitating him or propelling him into objects. We cut to my boy Marco looking badass, having some war paint on his face. I'm just assuming that's actually mud. There's a quick shot of Mina Loveberry, again young, hitting what appears to be a member of Buff Frog Species, who shackled up with her hair. Hey, and hey, considering arms just came out, it reminds me a lot of Twin Tail. And notice the giant ass paper. I'm assuming this is the Monster Mumin Accord. And I'm assuming Mina is pro war, actually. And that's why she's swatting him, or she's like making him sign it. Like, you better sign it, it's better than getting your ass handed by us. This shot is of young Queen Moon and her wand being cor not corrupted but tainted with dark magic, which we find out later on may be a certain somebody. And oh my god, I love this shot. I'm assuming this is from the episode Toffee. I'm assuming this is the scene where he actually kills Moon's mother. He's making his way through skulls and he's wearing the skulls of some butterflies as shoulder pads. Oh my lord. And you can tell this is a flashback and not present there or anything because he has both fingers. This is the scene where Moon blast his finger off oh my lord what if the episode opens up with that oh i can't wait the next shot stars like leaping up gasping for air the room people were saying this is like the same color as what moon's wands put up in the flashback and no that was purple this is green i believe this is some kind of liquid that's actually rejuvenating the magical eye commission because again it looks like they're still inside the glass rick temple we have a quick shot of young moon and oh my i love how she looks here she looks just like how started and instant wand and she, they just look so alike and she's looking at Eclipse's spellbook, and you can tell because the next shot is a skull that locks away Eclipse's chapter. And here we have Moon, assumably shaking hands with Eclipsa, whose hand is just like completely purple. I'm assuming this is her making a, a Bill Cypher type deal with dark magic. 
and nice because y'all know I love Gravity Falls. So anything that reminds me of it, especially something as great as Star, is is a plus, a okay by me. Like like let's have more of it. And finally, the title card: Star vs. Force of Evil: The Battle for Muni to our event, July 15th, Saturday. Gang Gang, I'm really excited for it. Shout to Swaggy Thunder for Gang Gang. And I wonder if Star's wand being tainted with a purple ooze. I wonder if that's a graphic created just for the promos, or if that's actually gonna be in the episode that Star's gonna make a deal with Eclipsa in the special. And there's a money shot. It fades into Eclipsa, and Moon says Eclipse is alive, and I made a deal with her. And this confirms that Eclipse did not have lipstick on. She, when she was crystallized, she had a smile on her face. And Eclipse begins to dip down from inside the crystal. The spades in her cheeks begin to glow. Oh my lord. Also, I don't think Eclipse is actually missing her arm. You would think so from what you can see in Crystal Clear and in the new opening. However, it's actually possible that her glove can float in midair, and she got crystallized in the middle of making a deal with Moon. So she got crystallized in a handshaking position and her glove was just like chilling next to her and it just gives the illusion that her arm was blasted off but yeah that's the promo oh oh my god it's just so insane it's so good i'm so excited for these episodes but i i have to know what do you guys think let's get a discussion going in the comment section below i'm so i'm just so excited and if you enjoyed this video please order like and if you're new here hit that subscribe button it really helps us out and if you want to support us in what we're doing, consider subscribing to us on Patreon. If you select our diamond tier, we'll shout out your channel and you get coupon codes for our Teespring store, among so much more like early video access, a link to our Patreon-only Discord server, and we're working to bring you bigger and better tiers. Uh, guys, I'm so excited for the future of both this channel and, well, all the amazing shows we talk about. That being said, I hope you have a wonderful day. Awestruck Vox, signing out. This video has been powered by Patreon. If you want to give us some more support, head to patreon.com slash roundtablevids, become a patron, and get some awesome perks. Thanks for watching another video on the Roundtable. If you want to get more involved with our community and watch videos from Let's Talk with Tom, Voxbox, and more, click the video right here. Or if you want to get some more of the animation goodness, watch some Crystal Clear or Mini Monday, click the video right here. And please, don't forget to subscribe.